All right. Uh, are you ready for some serious hardcore Orwellian 1984 action? You are? Oh, cool. All right. So uh, the, the, uh, the U.S. government, they just passed the Inflation Control Act. Now you say to yourself, so the government has the ability to bring down inflation? If the, Jared, if the government has the ability to, br- by passing a law, and spending money because you guys understand that's what bills are a bill in, in is not and you're like what's oh, a law no it's a giant price tag a bill is a giant is basically the authority it's congress granting themselves authority to spend more of your money no bill that is ever passed in the house of representatives the senate signed by the president is free it always has a price tag and this one has a multi-billion dollar price tag so the the anti the inflation control act 79.6 billion dollars is i know how we can bring down inflation how's that spend 79 billion dollars well to be fair it's only 7.96 billion per year oh okay oh it's only 7.9 thousand yeah. million dollars yeah because the 79.6 billion is over a 10-year period so we're spending what are they doing money, what are they spending that money might on? actually be normal priced money by the time we get there to pay for it did you know but that? i thought that we we're in the red actually i thought we were in a massive deficit right no. now no didn't you know that i can't even think of something stupid to say we're in a massive deficit we have no money so the answer yeah this is not insane. about having money it's about having resources to obtain the money you don't have to have do you money. mean like like going to the federal reserve continue. and just saying hey will you print some money for us you can just continue to to put yourself in debt further and further and further and further until eventually you go bankrupt just because you're but does the government debt, ever go bankrupt doesn't mean that you can't acquire more money mm, but does the government ever go bankrupt or do know. they just it's, print more money and, and give us the bill for it I don't know. can i do that with my bank account once it once it reaches zero can i just keep writing checks and just tell the bank well i know that it says zero today but in the future i'll have more money so i need you to just let me keep writing checks you can't on a zero account you know how you do that oh you get an override no yeah you get yeah. a overdraft protection you get a line of credit yeah you get they're like yeah we'll we'll get let you we'll just that's, uh that's what we're operating eventually on as a country it's eventually a the bank says credit. no can i can i use my overdraft protection to buy a house no but you can get a mortgage which is also a line of credit if i have zero and really if i have zero dollars in my bank i can get a mortgage in a house i mean maybe depends on who you know right depends on who you know yeah okay um so this this is see this is the insane thing it's like if the government can pass a law to reduce inflation couldn't the government have just stopped it from happening I don't know. That's something I've been thinking about because. Uh, or what, did it, they cause it? It seems. By printing like, money. It seems like. That has no backing. If you let me finish what I'm saying. It seems like we have. The, the government has figured out how to. Parachute in softly. From this. This economic. Potential economic collapse. That they caused. It. Yeah. It. It, it seems like that we figured out how to parachute in softly, but then I'm confused because if that is the case, is it, is it, are we doing that? Are we parachuting in softly because an election is coming up or, okay, why are we, why, we're just why kicking is the it can down out? the road? So for the next generation and, to have to deal with. And in addition to that, um, how is that happening? How did we figure that out? So, if you as a household if you as a household let's say have have any of you ever gone to a debt consolidation counselor or have you ever gone to a financial counselor a lot of you have and and so you're like well as a couple as a married couple we found ourselves in massive debt we we couldn't 
we couldn't make the bills with the money we we're bringing in. And we're like, well, you know, it, it doesn't matter what we do. We don't have enough hours in the day to work more hours. And so you sit down with a debt consolidation guy. Doesn't he tell you to spend more money? Yeah. What is what is the financial advisor to do? The financial advisor says, oh, you're in debt? and you can't cover your costs, you know what you need to do? I want you to go out and spend more money. That's what you need to do right now. You need to go out. You need to figure out ways to spend more money. You say, no, Paul, that would be retarded. That is not what happens, and that's not what you do. Oh, but if you're in the government, that's exactly what you do. If you're in the United States government, so rather than... pumping the brakes and saying you know what we probably should stop just printing billions of worthless dollars that could be a start let's stop doing that let's stop spending money we don't have we could do that no your government their solution to an economic crisis is to spend more money and then as an addition, as an additional insult to you, the person, the citizen who could never get away with this, you as a citizen could never get away with doing what the government is doing. But as a bonus, you're like, we just slapped you on your left cheek. Hold on. We're going to slap you on your right. So the government's like, you know what? The, the economy is in crisis. We're having a, you know, this is not good. We got to pump the brakes, stop this inflation. Of course, they sent Joe out to say that last quarter we had zero inflation. That's funny, Joe, because everyone in America is spending more for everything they buy. But I guess if you say, uh, uh, well, the president said what the president said. And if he said it, then it's the truth. The uh, Penn Wharton University of Pennsylvania published a, uh, what is this called? A budget model, I guess, is what this is. Uh It says there's a summary, PWBM, Mm -hmm. estimates that the Senate passed version of the Inflation Reduction Act would reduce non-interest cumulative deficits by $264 billion over the budget window. So it's costing 70, essentially $80 billion. Returns are supposed to be two hundred sixty-four billion. S- seems good on the face of it. Mm-hmm. The impact of inflation is statistically indistinguishable from zero. Okay, GDP so here- falls slightly within the first decade, while increasing slightly by twenty fifty. Most, but not all, of the tax <sighs> increases fall on higher income households. Stop. Stop. Okay. So rather than spend less money, then the federal government says, rather than saying, you know what? Here's what we need to do. We need to be fiscally responsible. We need to not spend more money. We need to spend less. No, 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 no. That's not it. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to fix the inflation problem that we created. In 2019, 2017, 18, 19, the economy was roaring all right, oh, can we not remember what happened three years ago? Three years ago, companies were deliberately and purposely coming back to the United States from overseas. Not because someone put a gun to their head, but because it was a good thing to do. People were working. The economy was good. Gas was low. You could buy food. But didn't you just see that there we had the biggest jobs jump in the last three years? No, we didn't. It's a lie. So Uh the government's not quit trying to take me off track. And then so the government solution to fixing the economy is to hire an army of IRS agents to go steal more of your money. Oh, no, it's all here. I got to steal money from the rich people. No, because this is what we know. This is the reality of the world. Wealthy people have financial attorneys and accountants people who have accumulated large amounts of wealth have attorneys and accountants and they pay them to keep the irs off their back 
the average person can't afford to put an, a tax attorney on retainer. Oh, you go to H&R Block. You can go to H&R, go fornicate yourself. It's you, the person who actually is trying to get ahead in your life, the person who's trying to buy a house, the person who's trying to improve your lot in life by getting a better promotion or a better job. Maybe, maybe you're an insane person and you've decided to start your own business. That's who this army of IRS agents is going after. This army of IRS agents is not going to target the wealthiest of all Americans. And first of all, who in the hell gave them the authority to target them anyway? Why don't we target congressmen and senators? They seem to be making a lot of money. This is a massive insult. But we haven't even gotten to the best part yet. So the accountants. Now I talked to Zach about this on the phone yesterday. One of the one of the insane things of being my age and having a memory is when I was young, the government used to refer to the income tax as quote the voluntary income tax system. They actually did that. They actually said those words. We've gone from the voluntary income tax system to we're going to hire an army of tax auditors. And if you don't, you know, years ago, I was talking with uh, um, Tom Gresham. I think we were on his show. And he said, he said, taxation at the point of a gun. And people are like, oh, that's not true. That's not true at all. It's, it's not, it's, it's paying your fair share. You need to pay your fair share. As long as we all pay our fair share, everything will be fine. My question to you is, is okay, let's go ahead and, and go to your utopia where everyone, quote, pays their fair share. First of all, what is that even? But let's just say that happens. So does that mean that the government will stop spending money it doesn't have? Does that mean the government will set an annual budget and when that money is spent, they'll stop spending money? And, you say, and you're like, well, no, actually what the government does is they just, they create a budget, but it's more of a guideline than a rule. So if they need more money, then they just go to the Federal Reserve and they just make more money out of nowhere. Or they go to China and they borrow it. And like, so how is, how is me paying my fair share going to make sure that my government is fiscally responsible with the money that they steal from me? And can, do we have any repercussions when they steal our money and use it for things like, I don't know, murdering babies? I don't think murdering babies is a good thing. Matter of fact, I disapprove of murdering babies. I don't think that my tax money should be given to organizations like Planned Parenthood that murder babies. Yeah, but here's the deal. You don't get a say in how that's spent. They take it at the point of a gun. So this army, if you're not insulted as a citizen by this, I don't need, I don't know how to reach you. This army of IRS agents well, they want them armed. And someone recently said to me, well, technically IRS agents are law enforcement. As somebody that went through a six month, 520 hour police academy, who had to go to a state accreditation examination to be accredited by the state to become a law enforcement officer, the idea that someone would tell me that an IRS agent is, quote, law enforcement is supremely insulting. They're tax collectors. Their job is to figure out how to steal your money. And now... They want you to be afraid to even open your mouth and question them because, well, it says uh, you must be willing to work 50 hours a week and to carry a firearm and to use deadly force if necessary. What happened to the voluntary income tax program? 
Well, it's voluntary unless you open your mouth uh, or unless you don't give us the money that we think. When we'll come to you with guns, and if you resist, we'll kill you. But what's worse is the memory hole. You see, the memory hole, Jared, what was Winston's job? What was Winston's job? What did he do for Big Brother? He fixed it. That's right. He removed it. He took the the government decided. He was in charge of making sure he was, disinformation and misinformation did not happen. That's right. One, well, he was one of many. But his job was to make sure that he altered and changed factual history on behalf of Big Brother. People don't need that information anymore. We're going to change it, and it'll be as if it never happened, as if that person never, ever existed. Just read the first paragraph here, or read the title in the first paragraph. IRS deletes job posting seeking applicants willing to use deadly force. The IRS deleted a job posting Wednesday seeking a special agent willing to use deadly force for its law enforcement division criminal investigation. The deletion came amid renewed scrutiny of the IRS in response to the to a Democrat backed spending bill that would double the size of the agency. Double the size. Yep. So. And you say, okay, let's let's just go ahead and move on from that. That's one weaponized. So we're going to weaponize the IRS, but we can't weaponize the IRS if these damned peasants still have guns. Well, we're weaponizing the ATF. The ATF just recently gave themselves the authority to reclassify a rectangular-shaped piece of aluminum as a firearm. You see, the rectangular-shaped piece, it used to be, Jared, back in the crazy, insane old days, that they said, well, first of all, in the United States of America, you never needed to put numbers on your guns to own one, right? And, but then they came around, they're like, no, nah, you got to, because we got to track them, and that's going to stop crime. We've been tracking guns for 60, 70, 80 years, and it hasn't. doesn't seem like it's brought the crime rate down. They've, the guns have had serial numbers on them for what, since 34? And yet every year, there's so much crime. and Oh, the crime. Oh, the gun crime. Well, you told us in 1934, if we let you mandate serial numbers on guns, that it would bring down the crime rate. So did you lie or were you incompetent and wrong? Which is it? Did they lie to us then or were they just incompetent and wrong? No, we just need more laws. So the ATF is a bureaucracy, not a law enforcement agency. Okay. They're a bureaucracy. They're a tax collection agency. But they've given themselves the authority to create law. And you said, hang on a second, Paul. No bureaucracy in the United States has the authority to create law. That falls on the Congress and the Senate. Yeah, yeah, I know you think that the legislative branch is the only branch of government that can quote create law yeah but when you're the federal government what you do is you just create a bureaucracy and you give them the authority to just do whatever they want they can make rules you say yeah but a rule is not a law paul an executive an order is not a law a memorandum is not a law a law is a law but a rule is not a law well, what we're going to do is we're going to enforce it like a law. And uh, if you if you open your mouth and talk back to us, well, then we'll sell people to sh- we'll send people to kill your dog, arrest you and throw you in jail. So the AFT uh, has decided it's going to redefine. And here we are again, allowing the government to change the definition of words. Does anybody else have a problem with the government just changing the definition of words? A vaccine is a medicine that you're given to prevent you from getting a disease. Well, that was the old definition. The new, the definition of vaccines, actually, it's a shot we give you so that you'll still get sick, but it, it won't be as bad. 
that's a vaccine? Yeah, but for the entire history of man, the vaccine was something we give you so you don't get that disease. Yeah, well, we had to, we changed the definition of the word. So now the definition of frame or receiver on a firearm is, well, apparently anything. If it's a oddly shaped piece of aluminum, and you say, well, if I handed you an 80% lower, and I said, here, make this a gun. Make this shoot. This is this is a gun. Make it go bang. You're like, well, I can't. Well, what do you mean you can't? Well, you can't make it shoot or go bang until you put it in a machine and you, and you cut it and drill holes in it, and then you put a trigger and stuff in it. Then it'll be a gun. Yeah, but you just said that that weird-shaped piece of aluminum is a is a firearm. Well, yeah, because we don't want peasants to be able to have them. Where in the F does it say that a peasant can't make their own firearm for their own use? Now, you decided back in 34 and 68 that we couldn't make them on our own and sell them to each other. But where does it say what law says that you can't make one for your own use, for your own personal use? <sighs> Well, it doesn't say that, but blah, 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 blah. now you guys remember the the famous but incompetent the FIB. Yeah, you guys remember uh, sixteen candles, right? When Long Duck Dong, I call police. I call FIB. He called police. He called FIB. So you remember when the FIB decided to investigate angry parents under the domestic terrorist statute? Remember when they said that they weren't going to do it? Remember when the head of the FBI went before Congress and said, that's ridiculous. That is, that is ludicrous. Not the rapper. That's ridiculous and ludicrous. And we would never investigate parents who are angry at their school boards for brainwashing their children and abusing their children. We would never investigate them as terrorists. Well, and then then somebody did some investigate. They they filed a Freedom of Information Act, and they did some investigation. And guess what they found out? Well, they found out that the FBI did, in fact, investigate angry parents as, quote, domestic terrorists. Oh. You mean after the head of the FBI went before Congress and said that that was crazy, that was crazy talk, and there's no possible way that the FIB was going to investigate angry parents as domestic terrorists? And then they went ahead and did it. And we said, wow, maybe the FIB's out of control. Maybe, you think? Remember when the FIB burned the uh, compound in Waco to the ground and killed? See, the FIB still holds the record for most kids killed in a day. Not supposed to know that. Not supposed to talk about that. Makes you That just made me a violent militia extremist for bringing up factual history. It's not like the FIB would send out a sniper and kill an unarmed woman who was standing in the doorway of her house holding her infant baby. It's not like they would do that. Well, yeah, but if they did that, that guy would be in trouble. If that sni if a sniper killed an innocent unarmed woman with a 308 bullet through the head, that guy would be in prison for his whole life. Actually, what we did for that guy is we sent him to where, Jared? Where did they send Lon Horiuchi? To somewhere else. No, I mean, there's, he, they sent him to somewhere else. They sent him to Quantico, and they made him a traitor. And he got a gold watch. And right now, today, as we're speaking, he's getting a pension. He's got a big, fat government pension. He didn't spend one day in jail. Now, you and I, they'd have buried us under the jail. So the FIB now has decided to classify, and it, these were leaked documents, this is a story from AmmoLand.com, uh, anybody who essentially, they sent out, if you find out these people are, quote, 2A supporters, if they, these are the symbols that make you, so if they find out, if the FIB finds out that you have the following symbology 
whether they're shoulder patches or stickers on your car or anything, that is an indication to them to their counter-terrorist unit that you are a militia violent extremist. The, the Spartan Valhalla helmet. Yes, the Spartan Valhalla helmet. The Mulan, using the term Mulan Lave, the Greek, the Greek come and take it. You know, your tattoo makes you a yep, militia violent apparently. extremist. If you openly support and discuss 2A and well, if you use the term well-regulated militia, if you own or display a Gadsden flag, you're like, wasn't that used during the American Revolution? Yep. Or a Betsy, Betsy if Ross If you use flag. a Betsy Ross flag, you're like, wasn't that the original first flag, 13 stars of the United States of America, the first American flag? Yes. If you reference or display the Liberty Tree... If you reference or display a Revolutionary War soldier imagery, all of these things, according to the FIB, classify you as a violent militia extremist. Oh, don't forget the predator or the uh, Punisher. If you use the Punisher, yeah, the Punisher skull or any variation of the Punisher skull that classifies you as a violent militia extremist. But the funny thing is here in under symbols of militia networks, some MVEs may self-identify with American contingency is one of them. And in the description, it says mainstream militia nationwide, mostly online activity, low history of violence. Yeah. So in case you guys haven't figured it out yet, the federal bureaucracy in Washington, D.C., the FIB and the ATF, the AFT, according to Sniffy Joe, it's the AFT, and I don't want to call him wrong because the president said it, and what the president said stands. So what we're going to do is we're going to weaponize the FIB and the AFT to disarm you, and then after you're disarmed, we're going to weaponize the IRS to take your money. And we're telling them, they're recruiting people. You say, you're like, well, that's just standard law enforcement practice, Paul. First of all, calling the IRS law enforcement is an insult to every person who's ever actually put on a uniform to defend their community. And that's an, it's a slap in the face. And they're recruiting people. And then what's worse, Jared, you see, well, if that's fine, if it's perfectly fine, to say, well, these people are going to be law enforcement, and that's part of law enforcement recruiting is deadly force and carrying a gun. Well, if they're so proud of it, why did the IRS go in after some media people posted that? Why did they go in and memory hole that? Why did they go and delete it? Why did they take it down? See, that makes it worse. That's like, oh, no, no, we never said that. Well, yes, you did. Nope. Memory hole. Winston threw that down the memory hole. You don't know that. That didn't. That never existed. We're going to change the definition of the word. We're going to allow the government to change the definition of words at will to meet with whatever they want to do. Kids, you, the end of the story is this. If you pay attention, if you read the news, if you see what's happening, you need to understand this. It is you, the American citizen, that is the enemy of the federal government. They view you as their enemy. They don't view criminals as their enemy. They don't view the cartel as their enemy. They don't view the Chicago gangbangers as their enemy. They don't, they don't view a million illegal invaders, most of which are cartel members many of which are cartel members they're not the enemy you're the enemy because you're the only one who has the power to stop them you see they're not worried about the gangbangers in chicago stopping them they're not worried about the illegal invaders stopping them their biggest fear 
is that you, the American citizen, will stop them. That's why you are their enemy. That's why you have to be disarmed. That's why you have to be controlled. 